Okay, 1 John chapter 2. I think we made it about, no, we made these six verses last week. We, we, we did all right. Uh, we're we're going to pick up with verse 3, verses 3 through 6 in chapter 2. And again, you're going to keep seeing a very black and white stark contrast of, of John in his writing. Verses 3 through 6. We know that we have come to know him, come to know Jesus, if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Okay. Plenty to think about there. Plenty to, to challenge us in our thinking and challenge us when it comes to just simply reflecting upon our lives as we live from day to day. I mentioned uh, when we first got started in, in 1 John that about 13 different times you hear a statement something like we know that we have come to know him or this is how we know we are in him so two times in these few verses we see that we know we've come to know him if if what we keep his commands we obey his commands right this is how we know we are in him how do we know we're in him Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. So two ways of saying this right in these verses. One is that we obey the commands. We obey his commands. The other is we walk like he walks. We live like he lives from day to day. Um, you know, John is... If you go back to, to the Gospel of John, he's, he talks a lot about obedience. Obedience act, actually as an evidence of love. Obedience as an evidence of abiding in him. And um, I believe if, if, if you go back, like for example, to John 15, when, when he talks about uh, abiding in the, in the Lord and, and he abiding in us, um, he goes on and, and talks about a lot about obedience uh, and obeying, obeying the commands of, of the Lord. So let, let's think about this for a minute. I, I'm hearing him speak of obedience as a sign of walking in fellowship with him. I'm hearing him speak of obedience as a sign of walking, he's talked about light and darkness, as a sign of walking in the light. I'm hearing him say it's a sign of our love for Jesus. Um, we know we've come to know him if we obey his commands. If you think about his commands, what are, what are some of the, the commands that would come to your mind that he might be, John might be referring to? Love your neighbor as yourself. The second greatest commandment, Love your neighbor <laughs> as yourself. To <coughs> have no other gods before us. Uh, if, if we talk about loving your neighbor as yourself, I, I believe that was after he, Jesus shared that as the two great commands. He talked about, the question was asked, who's my neighbor? And he told the parable of the Good Samaritan. Uh, indicating that our neighbor wasn't just the people that we're comfortable with. It's the people, it's everybody, right, is our neighbor. Um, no other gods. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Having him at the very top of, of our lives in our relationships. Um, you know, and we, we talk about this a lot, but, but let me just ask it for a minute. What other gods can come between us? I mean, I don't, most of us aren't pulling out idols and, and bowing down. So what other gods? Whatever you put before God. Whatever comes between us and God. And that could be a multitude of things. 
what might be my temptation to put something in front of my relationship to God might be something totally different for you. <clears throat> Do you have any other thought about that? All of the commandments. Well, you think about the, the, the go to the Ten Commandments. That's right. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Right. All the commandments. Yeah. The whole thing's kind of depressing because there's no way you can walk like Jesus. I mean, in I, I mean, every time, you know, you're, you're trying to obey and then you mess up and you're like, oh, wow, I must not, it well, must not be in me because I messed up. Let's bounce on down to that. Okay. <laughs> this is how we know we're in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Um, let's talk about it just for a second. Before we, before we claim we fail miserably at that, let's ask, what does that look like? To walk as Jesus walked. All right, it certainly is in fellowship with God. Humble himself. Humility. Recognizing who we are in relationship to him and recognizing who we are in relationship to other people. How did Jesus walk? What, what, he, what comes to your mind when you think about how he lived from day to day? How did he minister? He laid his life on the line. I mean, he, he emptied himself, right? He left his glory. He came to earth. He became, he stepped into our skin. He literally identified with us and to the point that he gave his life to open the door for us. So, and what did he say? Anybody who wants to come after me, Let's carry on. deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Follow is to walk in his ways. And his whole life was in service. His life was in service. To us. Is that possible? Is it possible to live your life? It's it, not possible to follow in his footsteps just exactly the, the way he did because we're just human. Well, none of us can give our lives That's right. for the salvation. I mean, he's the only one that opens the door of salvation. He's the only one that is holy and sinless. We're going to fall. We're going to fail. We've all sinned, fall short of the glory of God. Here's where I find the challenge. See if you think this way at all. I find that our temptation is to, to look at, at this. And to say, we can't do that. And kind of almost immediately look for getting off the hook. But what about the disciples? Were John, Peter. They all stubbed their toes. They stubbed their toes. And kept on going. Right? Yeah, they kept on going. And we stub our toes. Every day. I stick my foot in my mouth. Or I do something and I think I shouldn't have done that. And the enemy, he's going to whisper, see, you can't do that. But the Holy Spirit is whispering, it's okay. Get up. Brush yourself off. Let's go. Keep going. Keep walking. I I think this the, what what would a life look like if you and I sought to walk like Jesus did? What would our lives look like? How would would how would it be different from what we are right now? Can we do it working every day? Can we do it raising families? Can we do it um, just dealing with everyday life, paying bills and, 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 and going at it from day to day? Is it possible? It would probably take us out of what we perceive as our comfort zone. Oh, it would definitely take us out of our comfort zone. Yeah. 
Absolutely. I told, it might have been you I was telling, right? It might maybe not. But I told somebody the other day, I feel like my life, my adult life, has been one great big time where God is just stretching me like a rubber band. And then every once in a while, he lets it go. And then lets it breathe. <laughs> and then stretches a little more. He tends to not let me get real comfortable. Because when I, me, when I get real comfortable, I tend to take my eyes off of him. I tend to just kind of start doing my own thing. Um, I think we all do that. Yeah. You know, I think because we're you know, always in our busyness, of like what you're saying, mm -hmm. family or job or paying the bills and all that kind of thing, that we don't, and we might find out that it's a lot, heck of a lot better if we do. Well, I think we, 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 do, we will find that out. And, and my, what, what I see in my suggestion, and, and certainly just we can talk about this, but my suggestion is that we're raising our families, we're doing it as Jesus would have us do it. We're walking in our marriage, we're doing it as Jesus would have us do it. We're working our jobs, we do it as Jesus would have us do it. It's a mission field. Our jobs are our mission field. That is right where he planted us. Our neighborhood is our mission field. It's right where he plants us. See, I don't think it's, I think our tendency is to think you have to be on the mission field somewhere. You have to, you have to walk away from your job and you have to walk away from your family. And you have, to, I mean, to do all, and, and it, that's not it at all. It's, it's walking with Christ in every relationship, in every job, in every situation that we're, that we're facing. I mean, I don't know. Let me know what you think. I agree because you can't set you can't set an example for people to want to be like Jesus if you're not trying to be like Jesus yourself. And and just simply wanting to to. Pursuing a relationship with the Lord is what empowers us to live the way he's talking about. I mean, it's in his word. It's, it's tuning into his Holy Spirit. It's, it's starting each day, giving it to the Lord. It's, it's sometimes several times a day. Have, I can say, boy, I wasn't paying much attention at that point when he opened up the door wide. Um, it's just really, I mean, I, uh, I just have always seen, if you think about where all of us are each day, he's got us right where he wants us, if, if we're listening and if we're being obedient. He's got us right where he wants us. And, and you're touching people's lives or have the opportunity to touch people's lives that, that I never can, that other people can't. Because he has you there. And, and uh, <clears throat> I talk to people all the time who don't like their jobs. Why don't you pray about it as a, as a mission field? Why don't you ask God to show you the people you're working with? I'm not talking about you have to go up and, and every day tell them about Jesus. I'm talking about living like Jesus. I'm talking about being Jesus to them. Listening. Praying, uh, helping. The way we live says a lot. It says everything. How we live says everything. And that's what I hear him saying here. We know we've come to, to know him if we obey his commands. If we're walking as Jesus did. And yes, you will fail. I, will, I do fail. Uh, I've probably failed with some of you all when it comes to, to the years of relationship that we have. But I appreciate the fact that you forgive me. <laughs> and we, we keep moving forward. You know, we're not perfect. But I'll tell you what. People can see Jesus in you. Without a doubt. Steve? Remember the, it was Old Testament, all about stone, how they're jagged and sharp. Mm -hmm. um, I copied a thing down. 
I'm a big Andy Stanley fan. Mm-hmm. And I copied a thing down, put on my refrigerator. He that with this. He said, uh, uh, "Be the light, and let your light shine before men." Mm-hmm. Now, another thing. He's just quoting he, Jesus there. Well, yeah. of yeah. course. But the thing is, and some of the saints here have said the same thing, and I've run into it too. Uh, we try to walk according to Jesus, be kind to people, help people, do what we can. And, you know, but as the Lord has reminded me many times, you're not Jesus. No, you're okay. not. Uh, and I don't want to be Jesus. No. I want Jesus to be Jesus. You know what we are, Steve? That, that way I can go to him. We, we are followers of Jesus. That's why we walk as Jesus. That, that's him. why we walk as Jesus. Dude, we're followers of Jesus because he guides us. He leads us. And, and uh, he opens up doors. And we walk through them. Or we don't walk through them. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, we're followers of Christ. And, and that's what he, you know, he said, if you're going to follow me, you deny yourself and take up your cross. Take up your cross is death. Dying to self. Baptism, a symbol of death. Dying to self, rising to life in Christ. I mean, everything we do in the Christian life is pointing that direction and, and reminding us. And I don't find it, I guess I'm at the point in my life where I don't find it overwhelming. I find it freeing. I find it that's the place where I can truly seek to become what he envisions me to be is when he takes over. Now, we're constantly learning how to let that happen. And um, some of us are struggle at it a little more than others because we tend to, man, we want to control everything. We want to control everything. And to give it up is challenging sometimes. I just, I don't, I don't know. I think of the fruit of the Spirit. Where does that come from? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Hey, all, most of us in here can say, that ain't me. <laughs> right? But I think all of us can say, in him, it does come out. I, there are so many of you that I have seen, and so many in this church, that I have seen absolutely blossom in your walk with the Lord. I mean, blossom, and, and you're learning, and you're growing, and you're becoming more and more of who he sees you being. And the beautiful thing is, it never stops. As long as we're open, as long as we're walking, breathing, thinking, and moving, it never stops. That's, man, what a purpose-filled life. Why well, it sounds like a daggone book title, doesn't it? <laughs> Forgive me, I didn't mean to do that. At least I'm not preaching Tim Keller sermons. <laughs> Gotta read the news. Just check the news out. I watch the news. Uh, by the way, I, I love Tim Keller sermons and books, by the way. He's, he's a great guy. But a couple of folks are in trouble. Uh, high profile pastors are in trouble for literally preaching his sermons, illustrations, and all, and not giving him any credit. So you might check that out. Uh, I thought you meant he was in trouble. Oh no 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 Tim Keller. Oh, no 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 no. We can't we can't lose another one, Larry. <laughs> oh my. He is battling health issues though. Yeah, but no no he he he's oh from everything we know he is a man of God. <laughs> uh, oh boy, I tell you. Sometimes sometimes that gets frustrating and defeating. Especially when I find myself recommending books by somebody and they turn around and they find out, oh my gosh, now I guess I'll put those books on my shelf for several years and then maybe pull them out. It's good books, it's just... Yeah. Uh, but they're human. People are human and they make Yeah, mistakes. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, know, I know there are positions um, of, of teaching. I mean, I mean, seriously... If the day comes and you find that I've been having affairs behind my wife's back, you're done. 
<laughs> don't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We'll it, but then we'll be, my, my, my daughter will get, beat you to it. Um, yeah, she would. And I'm not, I, I'm, I got off track there. Um, okay. Let's, let's do this. Let's do, let's do verses 7 and 8. Dear friends, I am not writing you a new command, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. This old command is the message you have heard. Yet I am writing you a new command. Its truth is seen in him and you, because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. I was kind of, kind of thinking about that. Uh, the old command, I mean, you can go all the way back to the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 19.18. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people, but Leviticus 19, 18 says, love your neighbor as yourself. All the way back to Leviticus 19, 18. I am the Lord, keep my decrees. This is not new stuff. This is, God doesn't. God is God. Remember the new command? John 13, 34, Jesus said, a new command I give you, love one another. Now, wait a minute. It's back in Leviticus that says, I love your neighbor as yourself. And then Jesus is saying, and this, and this is the night he's going to be arrested. A new command I give you, love one another. Well, he's taking it further. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. So what's new about the command as Jesus is giving it? His example. He's perfect love. He, he is in the flesh God's perfect love. And right? our, our love of ourselves is, loving ourselves is not perfect love. And loving our neighbors as ourselves is not perfect love. But loving them as he loves us is perfect. To love him and to love them as he loved us. In other words, letting his love flow through us. Uh, I mean, by you know. Was he talking about just the disciples? Love well, he in that in that passage and in John thirteen, he's that. talking to the disciples. They're in the upper room, uh, but but he is he's indicating. You know, he says, as I've loved you, so you must love one another. That's up to that point. But he takes it further than that over the next 24 hours. From that moment over the next 24 hours, he allows himself to be arrested. He allows himself to be nailed to the cross to take our sins and the judgment for our sins upon himself and die for us, for the world, right? Blood sacrifice is all God will accept. We, uh, Leviticus... 16. And Jesus was that ultimate yeah. sacrifice. He's the ultimate. He's the one and only sacrifice. And but but he said, and then he but he says, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Now, I, you know, and he says, take up your cross. He he's not saying we have to be nailed to a cross, even though Peter was, more than likely, from, from what we know from from uh, Christian tradition and his, historical tradition. But it, it, it means that, well, what does that mean? What does it mean? As I've loved you, so you must love one another. To do as Christ does. Okay, so how, how do we, he, he gave everything for us, how, how do, as I've loved you, so you must love one another. Unconditional. Unconditional. Through him. Through him. That's the only way to do it, right? Can't be done any other way. As as followers of Christ, when we embrace him as Savior, Holy Spirit of God in us. Again, I can't do it, you can't do it. Apart from him in us. He shows us everything we need to know about ourselves. Everything that we need to deal with. 
Like we don't want to know. Everything that we don't really maybe want to know, but 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 you but you know everything that you deal with in your life that needs to be dealt with and you come through the other side it's all much better it's all for the good right who wants to confess their sins and come clean that's you know, some of y'all looked up at me like now if but when you, when you do that, when you get honest with God and you get on your knees before God or you fall face first in front of God and confess your sins and you find, as we read last week, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. I mean, that is the, a glorious place to be, is it not? All right, compared to walking through carrying the guilt carrying the sin and refusing to deal with it. So that's the thing he said to me. He said, I've forgiven you. Yes. And you need to forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's the one Absolutely. I have trouble with. That's the one most people have trouble with. Because it's like, you know, I did I did something bad, Lord, and I'm ashamed of it. And he's like, I've forgiven you of that. And I'm like, I can't let it go. He goes, you must forgive yourself and move, like you said, He's he's letting it go, right? He's letting it go. Have to uh, listen to that. So, you know, Christ is taking this command. It's it's a new command in the sense that he's taking it to the ultimate example in in himself. Um, it's truth is seen in him, John says, but it's also seen in you, he says. As followers of Christ, and I think I think also when you read the Sermon on the Mount, that's a great example of how Jesus took took the law and and explained it, took it to the heart of it, of, of really what's down underneath, and 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 helped us understand even more why God did what He did in terms of His teaching and commands. And what they mean for our lives. Okay, I tell you, I read this, and I and you know, John is is kind of considered the Gospel of John, and and his writings are con considered a gospel of love. He he talks about later on, God is love, mm -hmm. but I mean that sounds all warm and gushy until until you. When you read this and you think it through for your life, it is it is very challenging. But but it, my prayer is that it's not overwhelming. It's not meant to be overwhelmingly challenging. It's meant to give us a, a vision of who we are in Him. That's what I find free. He gives it. He lays it out there for us. This is what it looks like. This is how you get there just up to us to what yes. be obedient we must embrace follow that. okay that kind of goes back to what he said uh, last week about how uh, those are these other people you know and it's like you know Jesus did die for those other people sure but they have to come to him in other words God just doesn't walk around oh God's good he'll forgive me I, I, I can do whatever I want no It's all right. He paid the price. He paid the price. He paid the price that when we sin, sooner or later, we it catches to up to us. Then, if we we've got to deal with it, we have to deal with it. Yeah, we have to deal with it. All right. Let me let me have prayer, and Don, I'm going to turn it over to you and Kay. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. It's truth. It's challenge. It's vision. And the hope that we have in you and in that relationship with you through your son. So thank you. Thank you for the, the epistle of 1 John. God, may you be with us uh, as, as we discuss 
to matters of the church family and, and uh, any decisions that we make, may, may you be at the very center of it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.